Hi everyone, uh, my name is Laura. Um, I'm the founder of Yuyun. And that you can see Michael. Michael is another is my co-founder. So we both established this brand in 2020. So we have been running this business around a year. And to be honest, it's really tough for us to do this business because you know the uh, pandemic, like every everything has been shut down. And yeah. And we started to do this online and hopefully in the near future, we like to open a, a real store in London. Yeah. So that is our future plan. Mm -hmm. That's so exciting. I mean, I'm glad that we can have this virtual tea party, but it's yeah, so it's quite of people have been asking us, do you guys have a real tea room? And we're just saying, and unfortunately, because the COVID, it just kind of like stopped us. Mm. So it's disrupt everything. So we have to restart to the plan. So start doing online. And yeah, I think right now everything has been back to normal. And hopefully we can and welcome everyone to have a tea with us in real person instead of doing online. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so exciting. So what tea do you have today right now for uh, yeah, we, we we only focus on the tea come from my hometown. Um, it's a very small area in, in China. Um, but, um, you know, the, the tea come from China and my hometown is the original place of tea trees. So it's kind mm. of like the hometown of the hometown. Yeah. <laughs> tea trees come from there and our tea is very special because... Um, many teas have have different types, and especially here, my uh, the tea may be just small, come from the small and medium trees. But my hometown, especially, specialize in big trees, so it's different. And we only do tea from my hometown. Yeah, so we're mm -hmm. kind of like the niche market of the niche market <laughs> because people here they only drink tea using tea bags, but we do not want people to drink tea bags. We want people go with loose leaf tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of your hometown? Uh, Yunnan. Yun, Yunnan. I'm going to pronounce yeah. it wrong, I'm sure. <laughs> Yunnan. Well, Yunnan uh, actually, it actually means um, a colorful cloud. Oh. Um, yeah. So. so it's a pretty beautiful name. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Uh, and so, yeah, walk me walk me through the type of tea it is. So it's a, a black tea or... Yeah, black tea and um, green tea and another tea and dark tea is very special. It's only how and Ch China has this tea. It's called dark tea. Mm -hmm. And maybe you heard of uh, another name. People here call it pu er. Oh, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. you're, if you're familiar with that name, that's mm -hmm. more well-known name. But the mm -hmm. type is dark tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And is there a distinct taste or smell or something to the teas from this area yeah and um, actually the tea smells like fruit mm. and yes um, maybe Michael can give you a little bit more introduction about this tea because I, I, yeah. I think Michael got a nose he <laughs> has a very sensitive nose it's every time he smells uh, he smells a no tea and he always can immediately specify the, the the certain notes but i'm kind of like i'm not sure about what <laughs> what what's the frequency of, of it so mm -hmm. yeah michael here's your turn yeah. okay <laughs> so i'd say tea from yunnan tends to be quite robust so it's really good for blending it gives a kind mm -hmm. of really nice body to any any kind of tea you mix it with that includes like roses and uh, other kind of flowers or herbal teas you can mix it together actually have a, a nice, like stronger, but heavier brew. Um, so the general characteristics of Yunnan tea tend to be sweet and smooth. Mm -hmm. So you get these sweet fruity notes, but we have like one tea, uh, it's called golden tip and it smells like caramel. And I love caramel. And I, I could be in the tea room and I'm just smelling it. I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> so nice. <laughs> it's so good. But we have like nutty kind of different malts it's uh, quite a range, but um, currently uh, I've got actually I've got some in front of me right now. Mm -hmm. So the tea I'm drinking is um, our classic on food. So I can just take a little bit out for you. Yeah. Show the camera. I, I wish I could. Well, smell this it is yeah. the screen. <laughs> okay. So 
and I've got like tea like this. Uh -huh. So, um, let me see that. So, um, Zora mentioned it earlier, but um, tea from Yunnan is um, cultivated, it's, it's known as big leaf tea. Mm -hmm. So, um, tea is tea that uh, is known as uh, Camellia uh, sinensis, which is an evergreen shrub. And so you can get it in tree form, but you can also get it in bush form. So most of the world has it in bushes, but in Yunnan, you can get ancient tea trees. So big leaf tea is um, from, these, from these trees rather than bushes. But then you can see, like, if I just show you one of these leaves, mm. they're huge. Yeah, um, it's very long. Yeah, these are, these are the highest quality of leaf you can get. So, and that, that's kind of what we pride ourselves when we mm -hmm. get Yunani's tea, it's just it's that high quality yeah, kind of that's sweetness. That's what we promote yeah. this mm. whole time because we want people to appreciate tea leaves. We want people to see what actually the tea is because people here they already get used to drink with tea bags, but actually what's inside the tea bag is actually tea powder or the broken teas. So people, right. yeah, maybe people never know what the tea looks like and they mm -hmm. actually say the loose leaf tea they're like wow is it the tea we're drinking because they don't know what tea looks like so yeah we would like to give people a little bit education about the tea because mm. like mm -hmm. everybody drinking tea every day but we already kind of like take everything as granted we never appreciate the, the, the little bit the little things in our whole life so yeah so and that's why it steps to you in because we wanted people to cherish the little things in their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Controversial question. Do you put milk in the tea? Actually, yes. You, you know, Chinese people, we don't, we don't, we don't yeah, drink yeah. tea using milk. We just drink tea <laughs> itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, this tea from my hometown is the only Chinese black tea you can brew with milk. The only one. Mm -hmm. So you can do it in a British way or do a Chinese way, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it with milk. <laughs> no surprises there. Yeah. Awesome. So why don't you walk me through some of the, the benefits of tea? I'm a big tea fiend myself. Um, okay. And yeah, and I'm also wondering if, you know, there's, there's benefits to, I think, all kinds of tea. So I'm wondering if, if the tea from this area has any particular kinds of benefits or just... Yeah, in general, the joys of drinking tea. Okay, I think uh, that's more of a, a my topic. Um, <laughs> so I, I posted a blog recently, which is how many cups of tea can you have in a day? And it's interesting because uh, when we do ask people, you know, like how many teas do you drink a day or how many do you think it's safe to drink? Because mm. everything in excess is bad for you. Let's just get that clear straight away like if you have too much water it can kill you if you have too much of anything it can kill you or be mm -hmm. bad for you so tea is like that in a way and i think part of our message part of our brand ideal is to kind of be more transparent about what is in tea and the good stuff the bad stuff and mm -hmm. i think i just want to say some of that right, right now actually i can tell you yeah so um i tend to focus on the bad stuff more than the good stuff because the good stuff's kind of like not there's no real evidence to say that it, it does exist and it is, it is happening, but it's been associated with other things like antioxidants in the tannins. They're called uh, as a chain of polyethanols. So it could be too sciencey, but mm -hmm. um, no. polyethanols are, uh, have been proven to help fight cancer and such like that. And because tannin is a polyethanol, they believe that tea does the same thing in terms of fighting cancer and, uh, and uh, um, attacking free radicals and such. Mm -hmm. So you have that benefit of tea in the first place, just because of that association. Mm -hmm. um, but then I know, I know green tea has a certain property, which is, they call it anti-calories, like a, a fat burning compound within it. Okay, cool. It depends how much you drink, obviously, if you, <laughs> you need to drink a lot of tea in order to get the benefits and actually, a controversial point of this would be actually you need to drink a lot of tea before you get any of the good stuff but mm -hmm. by that time you have already got the bad stuff too 
So I, I will briefly just talk about the bad stuff because okay. I, I can really go into it further. Mm-hmm. So you've got caffeine, which everyone knows about because caffeine's in Coke, it's in, it's in all, all kinds of stuff and it's yeah. a stimulant. It's uh, increases productivity. But like tea labels, they might brand themselves and say and increase your productivity or uh, get yourself some energy or uh, boost mo- your metabolism. That can mm. all be linked to caffeine. But we know caffeine is also, you know, uh, bad for, you know, um, anxiety. It can cause sleep deprivation, all these other kinds of kind of nasty things. Um, mm. So it's kind of good and bad. You get you get good and bad together. So the second you have uh, tannins. So tannins can be found in like red wine, chocolate. It's this kind of astringency that comes with kind of these rich foods. Mm-hmm. And tannins, um, they can they are the uh, antioxidants. They are the polyphenols. They're the stuff that's associated with the best part of tea, which is the antioxidants and clearing your system. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe good for digestion as well. I think tannin is also meant to help your teeth as well. They can okay. naturally clear your, give you whiter teeth as well i've heard that i'm <laughs> not going to prove that but i've heard that too but then tannins the bad side of tannin is that um if you're if you have a deficiency of iron you shouldn't drink anything with tannin because tannins bind to iron in, in your body so you can kind of absorb iron so if you have an iron rich diet that's fine mm-hmm. but just to be careful of that as well um, and the third thing is oxalate and that's probably the worst thing in tea because Mm -hmm. i'd say i think most people most british people get that oxalate from tea and oxalate um is a compound that um connects to calcium so if if you have a obviously a calcium rich diet it's fine Mm -hmm. if you have milk with your tea even better you can kind of avoid that because it binds but it will absorb the calcium from your body and calcium oxalate is known as kidney stones. So mm. it can, oxalate rich foods include um, beetroot, rhubarb, uh, lots of like really healthy stuff actually. Mm-hmm. And usually it's worth it because you have all these benefits. But I think there is a story in America about uh, a guy drinking 16, uh, eight ounce glasses of tea, uh, iced tea every single day. And he got this, he had to go to hospital basically. Because yeah. Just emergency, um, because uh, kidney stones, of course. But mm-hmm. yeah, so there's good and bad stuff. But I think in terms of the good stuff, you need to drink a lot of tea in order to get those benefits. Mm-hmm. Maybe like six to eight cups a day, and that would you would get the bad stuff of that too. So we tend to draw more away from the kind of well-known good things about tea, and we tend to focus on like taking a moment, taking a rest, taking mm. that break, because that naturally just is a, about uh, de-stressing yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like looking inwards and meditating with our tea, which is uh, the basis of um, uh, Gong Fu brewing, which is having a, a personal like personal 30-minute session, just drinking mm-hmm. tea. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about the tea cultures in the UK and China. I did live in the UK a little bit, but I feel like I brought with me this this North American uh, idea of of tea and coffee where you often get it as a takeaway and you drink it while you're walking or you bring it to your desk at work and you, you don't really take a break. And so, yeah, I'm curious to hear more about, yeah, different tea cultures because when I was traveling, especially when I was traveling uh, through Japan and India, they really... They really do take a break and you sit and you have the tea and you enjoy it mm. and you smell it and you taste it so yeah i'd love to hear more about that side of tea culture um, in china and um, the buddhist believe tea can make you find your inner peace like if you're drinking tea you can settle down and realize uh, anyway, well, okay. while Zora's working that out, uh, I'll just take over for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I know in different parts of the world, tea uh, is served in loads of different ways. Like you have India, Sri Lanka, uh, Africa, mm-hmm. I think uh, South Africa as well, actually, now. Um, and obviously China, all do different ways of mm-hmm. uh, serving tea. I know in like Morocco and North Africa, you have like these mint teas, like these mm-hmm. 
and um, Sri Lanka, you have um, it's like condensed milk with tea. It's like really kind of like sweet, sweet iced teas. Mm -hmm. You have a uh, boba tea in like Taiwan uh, and and China. That's really taken off. I think there's this like cream cheese teas now <laughs> yeah, going yeah. about, and these look. It's like <laughs> definitely like calories. Like I'm just like wow, it's yeah. a, <laughs> a lot to take in. Um, but I mean, there's loads of different like I guess modern uh, renditions of, of tea and how it's just developing. And I guess that is that is a reason to go out to like a shop and or like a store and buy a takeaway cup, like mm -hmm. you know, like a Starbucks coffee. You'd go to like a a bubble tea shop and you'd, you'd get it, and that would be a its own social point in a way. Mm -hmm. Like you'd go out with friends and you'd have a you'd have a drink of this nice, I guess, beverage. But the uh, compared to being at home and making it all yourself, I mm -hmm. guess you don't have that like kind of going out with friends vibe and. But then at the same time, here in, in, in the UK, um, I guess before COVID, it wouldn't be uncommon for you to invite someone to your house and you know, have a cup of tea or like, mm -hmm. like a, fa a family member. Like when I see my parents, we always just have a cup of tea and chat. So I think it's very, it's very normal here. I yeah. Mean, so in, in China, and we all believe that drinking tea is like um, drink tea and you can calm down and we do have a uh, tea ceremonies which um, incorporate agriculture like the music dance so like in China drinking tea is not only about drinking tea drinking tea is uh, how you find yourself within the Chinese culture which is um, cha dao. and I think in Korea and in Japan all these East Asian countries we all feel the very similar thing and 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 here in, in Britain, people do like drink afternoon tea. Yeah, and mm. drink drink and eat some sweets, the, the scones and biscuits and talk. And people find tea and drinking tea is very elegant. elegant. Like a, a, a beautiful lady drinking tea and you're saying, mm, the very, very British, it's a very British way. So it's very different. You find tea in China and tea in Britain is quite different although tea comes from China. But I find one thing is really interesting is when you talk about tea, a tea ceremony, and people usually think British first. They just always think the British afternoon tea, but just a few people will think about chi Chinese tea. I, I'm not, I don't know why. I'm, I'm not sure how this will happen. Maybe because uh, Britain do PR very good. I'm saying PR, like they do marketing, they do tea marketing very good. It's like their identity. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like they're bragging about themselves. We, 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 we are British and we do focus on the courtesy and elegance, that sort of thing. I think and maybe Chinese people need to do more PR, do more marketing about culture mm -hmm. in, 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 instead of um, give people a feeling about how fast we're developing our economy is get stronger and stronger. I feel like people and Chinese people need to focus on cultural aspect a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Michael. To more, to more, uh, I guess, practice of Chinese cer uh, ceremony. Um, yeah. I think here, when you say about PR, I think it's just because it's just Western culture. And spreading, yeah, you know, it's, it's like when, over, when but... you when you talk about um, Japan or Korea, that people always think about a manga, Japanese animation, or a Korean pop culture, the BTS, and everybody mm. knows them, the the idol group. But when you talk about Chinese culture, as people here, especially in the UK, they always think about Chinese food, mm. Chinese restaurant, instead of really think about a really good Chinese culture. I think maybe we, we just focus more on our economy and instead of give people a softer, softer power because I think culture is softer power. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And and what does a, a tea ceremony look like in China? Kind of what role does it play or how often might somebody do it? Um, uh, it's kind of like the performance and a tea specialist will put loads of different very professional equipment and uh, give people how to pour tea, how to make tea taste good and tell people what's the story behind the tea. And uh, one, uh, for example, you, you can't pour very low and like very full cup 
because that's very implied. Because you kind of like give people a full cup. It's like I'm refusing you. You can't come to my house next time. So we have to pour a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of water and tiny bit of tea give to you and thinking you're very calm. You're very welcome to come to our house next time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. It's so interesting. It's very, it's very interesting. And especially in my hometown, and people just always like the host, host will drink tea first instead of giving guests a tea because because um uh in my hometown and um, it got loads of different um poisonous like the the grass like the plants and the the insects so um in the past people always buy uh were always killed by the different plants <laughs> so people like uh, a little bit suspicious about the unknown people. So if you invite somebody to your house, you have to prove your tea is not poisonous. <laughs> so you have to drink by yourself and prove you're still alive, then give to your guests. I think that's very different. Yeah, it's a very different culture. <laughs> Love that. It's like the yeah, uh, so uh, origin of time, cheers. Yeah, next time you come to my hometown, if, you, if the host just drink the tea, by themselves just don't think that's rude that's not rude that's very <laughs> actually they want to tell you this tea is totally good to drink and not gonna kill you yeah. <laughs> speaking of the dangers of tea it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's so interesting awesome well is there anything else you wanted to share about your teas at yuyan or tea culture or anything i think um you also uh, zora you have the the free course uh, tea? Yeah, um, it's a ice neat group based in our hometown. Um, I'm not sure you know that before because China has 56 different ice neat groups and Han, Han is a majority, like 90% Chinese people are Han and the 10% people are come from different minority ice neat groups. And my hometown has 26, 26 ice neat groups in China, which as a most most area has different people and and one group called Bai, and that means that name means white means white color so and they, they they think white is pure means pure and they do have a three course tea as a ceremony so mm -hmm. first tea is um is bitter yes, yeah. yeah and the second tea tastes sweet and the third tea tastes full of aftertaste is uh, because it has spi spice. So it's tiny bit spicy, but also sweet. That means that means your life journey, because in the first, your life might, uh, might experience bitterness or a high up and low and the sweet. But when you actually think about your whole life, it's full of taste. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, philosophy in tea. <laughs> yeah. yeah I think each minority has their own different tea ceremony and different tea ceremony outfits too. Oh, so it's like a, like a huge culture behind mm -hmm. Yunnan tea, which just, I think it's just, we want people to discover it. Mm -hmm. So we, like that's, that's kind of like one of our biggest uh, points as to why we specialize in um, Yunnanese tea. Yeah, um, from the beginning, my, my whole business idea is to open a tea house, but also open a small tea museum can act bit different tea selections come from my hometown but you know because of covid so everything has been stopped it mm -hmm. so but but we were going to launch our first exhibition in this july yeah nice so where can mm -hmm. people find you and stay up to date about all the developments as they come yeah and do you want to talk about more michael yeah yeah so we have a website where you can find uh lots of information about uh, Yunnan, Yunnanese tea, tea ceremony, and well, I guess if, you, if you're in the UK, you can buy the tea too. Uh, we will ship internationally eventually, but for now, I think we are going to stay stay in the UK. Um, so that's uh, yun, Yunnan, .co uk. But, uh, mm. I'm sure we'll, we'll put a link somewhere. Um, yeah. I think we, we forgot to mention the most important thing is our brand name. Oh yeah, uh, it would be nice yeah. to talk about that just briefly. Yeah, yeah really, go for really, it. It's a Chinese, Chinese word. It's, it means aftertaste. Yeah, so we want people to drink our tea, have a good aftertaste. Yeah. 
that's where you come from. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> very simple, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very simple. <laughs> that's great. Well, that's a great place to, to end, I think. And hopefully people will, yeah, get to try the teas and have a lovely aftertaste. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank All right, you guys yeah. so much for coming and having this Thanks chat. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, you too.